us. You give us this world and the breath of life, and you expect us to care for the world and to care for one another. We pray that each of us will live as you expect us to live, by dignifying human life, by offering hospitality, by showing respect, by building bridges of understanding, and by recognizing each person as a child of yours. Grant us the strength and grant us the courage to show the world that it is love and liberty and justice that are the true principles on which to stake the future of our planet. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I mean, thank you, Dr. Bradley Knox Jones. I would request Rabbi Douglas Krentz, the founder of J Street. Again, no introduction is needed, but he's one of the founding members for Bunny Soil Congregation in New York. Please put your hand together for Rabbi, Rabbi Douglas Krentz. We are here because an attack on any of our communities is an attack on all of us. Those who were massacred in New Zealand were God's good children. We mourn for them and we mourn with their families. In my sadness and in the face of darkness, I am mindful of Rabbi Leo Beck, who was the leader of the German Jewish community when the dark night of fascism descended on our world. Rabbi Beck and the German Jewish community saved one third of Jewish children. Then one day in 1943, Rabbi Beck rose <coughs> earlier than usual. At a quarter of six, he was fully dressed. The doorbell rang. Only the Gestapo would come at that hour, he recalled later. His housekeeper opened the door and ushered in two men who were wearing civilian clothes. We have orders to take you to Theresienstadt, one said. Please wait a while, I must get ready. You must come at once. Beck said, you are two, and you can, force, you can take me by force. But if you will wait an hour, I will go with you as you wish. wish. <coughs> One left to make a telephone call. When he returned, he said, we will wait. Rabbi Beck sat down at his desk and wrote farewell letters to his children. And he wrote postal orders for his gas and electric bills. My housekeeper had packed two bags, he said. I was ready to go. At Theresienstadt, while pushing a garbage cart, a big wheelbarrow, Rabbi Beck taught Aristotle and Plato. Rabbi Beck survived the war because he spelled his name B-A-E-C-K. The Nazis killed Dr. Beck, spelled B-E-C-K. After the war, Rabbi Beck wrote these words that are for us here today. And the spirit is characterized not only by what it does, but no less by what it permits, what it forgives, and what it beholds in silence. We will not remain silent when our brothers and sisters are murdered. And for us today also these words from Deuteronomy Lo tu halitalem, often translated, you shall not hide yourself. But I think better translated, you shall not remain indifferent. Today we are not silent. Today we are not indifferent to the suffering of our brothers and sisters. Today we stand shoulder to shoulder in an embrace of our common humanity. 
And today, we say these words of prayer for those who have died. Ose shalom bin Ramad, hu ya'aseh shalom, aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael. May the one who makes peace in the high places teach us how to make peace here in the low places for ourselves and for all of God's children. Amen. I mean, thank you, Rabbi Kretz. I would ask Sharon Chief Menas to come to stage, please. Sharon Chief Menas. Please welcome Sharon Chief Menas. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Sashri Kao, Vai Guji Ka Khalsa, Vai Guji Ki Fateh. When I walked into the place today, I did not come prepared or thinking that I will be speaking. I just came to express my solidarity, share the grief of everybody, especially the Muslim community, just the way I did when there was shooting in Pittsburgh. I just woke up that morning, Saturday morning, and I went to the Jewish temple in Newark. Not that I had a solution or something to say there, but just when something this insensitive and cruel happens, it's just not possible to sit. The least I thought I could do was go and stand with them and that's what my reason was for coming here and yes there are two reasons why this tragedy or tragedy like this at any place of worship house of worship happens it strikes a personal chord in the heart because not long back, six years back, it had happened at a Sikh Gurdwara also in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. And second reason is, especially in what happened in this place, which is a combination of two very holy names, Christ Church. was very baffling well because as a owner and operator of a software company for long years the culprit, the offender, the accused who did that used the IT or software, the social media, the technology for something which is very disturbing but at the same time I don't think legally or ethically or in any manner we are prepared to really diagnose what all is happening and what probably in the years to come can happen as a consequence of this but this is definitely a big wake up call for everybody who is connected with technology that what can it lead to. Thank you. On behalf of State Police, I request Captain Jason Sapp to come. One announcement uh, before we welcome him. Keep in mind 
by now you probably have figured out English is my sixth language, <laughs> which is true. So by accent you should figure out by now. So advanced apology if I mispronounce your name, no bad intention, but it's the sixth language and I'm still learning. So please put your hand together for Captain Jason Sayf on behalf of State Police. Thank you, Captain Jason Sayed. Next, on behalf of State Auditor General Kathy McGinnis Office, I request the Representative Rab Petrie to come to stage. Rab Petrie, please. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I'm thankful to be here on behalf of the State Auditor Kathy McGinnis, who unfortunately could not be here today due to uh, a scheduling conflict, but she wanted all of you to know, everyone in this state to know how deeply she cares about Delaware's Muslim community and, and all people of faith in this state and how saddened she was by the tragedy that took place in New Zealand. The freedom to have faith, to be proud of who we are and what you believe in is under attack by evil bigotry so sinister it seeks to intimidate and change the core values that are ingrained in our own constitution. As we mourn the loss of those in New Zealand, we recall instances across our own country where people of faith tragically had their lives cut short as a result of the same hatred. And now more than ever before, it needs to be confronted. So through coming together today, as Delawareans united in our own respective faiths, we are taking a stand and sending a message that we will not fear this evil, but we will instead rise above it and stand strong for what we believe in, for who we are, and what we all stand for. Again, on behalf of State Auditor, we stand with you, and we thank you for allowing us to be a small part in this amazing united front. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Rob Petrie. 
Next, I request on behalf of Federal Bureau of Investigation, Representative and Special Agent, Joseph Morasco, please come to stage. Joseph Morasco, please. Thank you for having me. And on behalf of the FBI, the FBI uh, Baltimore Division, our acting special agent in charge, Jennifer Moore, and our director, Christopher Ray, I want to thank you for having me and also want to offer my condolences on the tragic events that occurred in New Zealand this past week. The Baltimore Division is one of 56.